All right, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to clean quartz. Quartz is a pretty tough and durable mineral. It, it can withstand a lot usually. So we're going to um, look at specimens that uh, have been cleaned and some that we're going to clean. And then we'll talk about some of the methods. So this is a quartz crystal cluster that's been cleaned. This has been cleaned professionally. This one was cleaned through a, a process similar to what we're going to go through today where they're soaking it in water and then acids and then water and, um, and then we'll, we'll talk about that. This one's from Arkansas. Uh, some quartz crystals have uh, in hydros or uh, veils or cracks in them and so you have to be cautious of those when you're cleaning to make sure you don't give them any thermal shock, you know, dropping them in hot acid or cold water. Uh, that, that can obviously cause them to crack and you can lose the anhydros or just have the crystal fall apart altogether. It has happened, so you know, it's just something to be aware of. Sometimes you're cleaning minerals that have other minerals on them and you're going to want to keep those other minerals, so you have to be uh, conscientious of that as well. Make sure that you don't scrub off anything that you do want. Mechanical methods are the first method we're going to talk about, and that is going to be things that you can actually physically do to the, the quartz crystal. I always start with just plain water and uh, some kind of very soft brush that you can brush off dirt. Anything that's loose will come off automatically really easily. They're just cheap toothbrushes and a little scrub brush. I think this is from Ikea for like 89 cents or something. Uh, if those aren't strong enough, you can go to wire brushes. Quartz crystals are, strong, are harder than these kind of wire brushes, so you're not going to scratch and damage the crystal unless it's already damaged, in which case there's nothing you can do about that. So you can get very aggressive with them. If those aren't enough, then you can you go to something like Comet, uh, some kind of abrasive powder, and then a steel wool, uh, steel wool scrubby. Any of those can uh, definitely start uh, taking off crud that's built up on those. It won't take everything off, but it's, it's the place to start before you move to chemical processes. I like to use a razor blade where you can get right down and scrape down the flat faces. You can take the razor blade and just go right down the quartz crystal and scrape off any crud that's on there. It's good for removing labels, price tags, um, any kind of crud that's just attached to it. If you have a nice large flat face, obviously you're not going to get down into little grooves like that. That's not going to work. We have another method for that. One of the other mechanical methods of cleaning a, a quartz specimen is with an ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, they're noisy, so I'm not going to run that today. But uh, anyway, you put, you put water in here, it heats up, and it will, uh, it's called cavitate. So the water action, uh, the action of the water bubbles against the, the stone will uh, drive off all the, a lot of the crud. Anything that can be removed that way, it'll come off. It's not going to remove heavy oxidations or iron staining. Dental picks are another great one to use. You can get right down the little nooks and crannies, but there's better methods, so we'll get to that in just a second. One of my favorite tools is the uh, water jet gun, and we're going to demonstrate that over here. So all that's in here is water, and this spits it out, a little tiny stream at 55 PSI. So it will blow away a lot of stuff that's on the specimens and even some really hard to remove stuff. This will remove it. Now I've done part of the crystal here already so I'm just going to demonstrate just on this little spot. So it's just water and in this case, in this case some uh, just dirt. So you can see how you have to turn it at different angles so the water jet can get down there at different angles. You have to be careful with this that it doesn't hit your skin because it really stings. You want to avoid that. So we're going to take this now, it's, this specimen has is, is been pretty cleaned already, so we're going to take it over here and we're going to go to the acid. Alright, so when uh, you're working with acids, there's a few safety things we need to, to talk about first. The most important thing is an acid is an acid, and the opposite of an acid is a base. And so you always want to have a base around so that you can neutralize any spills or splashes. I prefer baking soda, it's a very, very mild base. And this is just some tap water, that's really all it takes. Some of that, we'll go let that sit and that'll dissolve. So that's one of the big things. Another safety thing is always have a face shield. You're always going to want to have a face, a safety goggles or a face shield. Uh, it's imperative if you want to keep looking, being able to see. So just make sure you're doing that if, if you want to keep seeing. Face shield, rubber gloves, these are not really good gloves. It's just all I have right now. I can't find my other good gloves. You really need to do this outside. The fumes from these acids are very caustic, especially towards any iron. So anything I have in the kitchen that's iron based, my cookware utensils can easily rust. But we're only going to be dealing with a small amount for just a few minutes, but I highly recommend you do it outside. This is muriatic acid. Muriatic acid is the equivalent of hydrochloric acid. It's just not nearly as clean or, or uh, and it's more diluted. So when you open this, you're going to get a, a whiff of chlorine gas. 
try not to breathe that. A, a good inhale of that will can cause pneumonia, so you want to avoid that. All right, so with the face shield down, rubber glove on, I'm going to take the lid off of here. You always want to put your stone inside the container first, and so you don't drop it and splash. That's an important thing. So I'm just going to add acid to it till it covers it. You can see it effervescing. What's happening is you have calcium carbonate mixing with the hydrochloric acid, and it gives off uh, chlorine gas, uh, carbon dioxide gas, water, and then uh, you wind up with a clean quartz. So I'm gonna bring the baking soda over here because we're gonna rinse that off here in just a second. We're gonna let that go for a minute. Other things for cleaning uh, quartz, uh, CLR, uh, calcium lime and rust remover. CLR is really good for removing um, iron oxides off of quartz, which is most of what people are gonna be removing, out iron oxides and calcium carbonates. For cleaning really hard to clean off things off of uh, quartz, some people will talk to you about hydrofluoric acid. Do not use hydrofluoric acid, avoid it like the plague. If you have to use hydrofluoric acid, you're better off sending it to a lab and having a professional do it. It's extremely dangerous. And I, you know, I just can't emphasize that enough. Now, with that said, you, every time you run your car through a car wash, they use hydrofluoric acid to wash your car. So if you go down and fill up a five gallon bucket of car wash solution, you can clean fluorides really well with that. You didn't hear that from me though. For cleaning manganese oxides off of uh, quartz, you use um, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is um, heavy water, it's just H2O2. It's really good for removing hydrogen, especially if you mix it with a little bit of uh, oxalic acid, and then you get a really good clean on that. I did not mix up a solution of that today. Uh, it, it only lasts for a few minutes, and so it's, it, you have to really do it quick, and I didn't have any specimens that needed to be cleaned from that. All right, let's take this quartz out. Uh, you can see that the bubbling has stopped now. It's not effervescing anymore, so we've removed the majority of the calcite so far, and I'm just going to Take it out, yep, most of it's gone. You can see it's going to effervesce in there when it reacts with the baking soda a little bit, neutralizing the acid. And you can see now all the white powder has come off and we do have some of the iron on here that we're gonna have to soak it in uh, CLR to remove that. So CLR is not nearly as dangerous uh, to use, so I'm just going to pour some in here. And we're going to put this amethyst crystal in there. Now that may need to soak for uh, maybe as much as 12 to 24 hours or, or, or even longer. This isn't a heavy coating of iron staining on there, so we're just going to give it a few minutes and see how that turns out. Sodium hydroxide is another uh, chemical that works really good for cleaning off certain things off of quartz, especially clay minerals. Sodium hydroxide is just basically drain cleaner, so Drano is sodium hydroxide. Again, it's very dangerous to use, uh, you know, other than if you just dump it in your pipes. Keep it so that uh, you, you have, you're, do, again, doing it outside. Now remember, the opposite of a strong base is a strong acid, so you're going to want to keep uh, maybe some vinegar around to neutralize it in case you have any spills or splashes, and, and vinegar will work really well for that. You also uh, want to make sure that you're cleaning and rinsing and cleaning and rinsing with that because it will dissolve the quartz. It'll take the sharp edges off and it will etch the faces if you let it soak too long. All right, so you can see here on this one, it is starting to remove the, uh, the iron oxide coatings on there. So, yep, it's just going to take it a, lo a, a lot longer. Now, if you heat up an acid or a base, uh, specifically an acid, for every 10 degrees Celsius you heat it up, its uh, chemical reaction doubles, its reactivity doubles. So just I, often I will put these, uh, especially uh, muriatic acid or uh, oxalic acid, in a crock pot and stick them outside and just let them bake for sometimes 24 hours. If you let them go too long, you wind up with the chlorine gas in here creating uh, residual uh, stains down there that are impossible to remove. If you let them go too long, also depending on what you're removing, you can wind up with other precipitates on the quartz that you can't get off. With, with anything. So you got to be careful. If it, you clean it for no more than 24 hours in, or 12 hours in a crock pot, wash it, neutralize it, neutralize and wash it, and then bring it back and do it again if you need to. And keep doing that over and over and over again until you get it as clean as you want. But uh, don't, don't just let it go for days and days and days. You'll never get it clean again. All right. Oxalic acid is also used for cleaning quartz. It's great for removing the iron stains and, and or manganese stains. You can use it with the CLR or after the CLR. The CLR doesn't take off the iron stains, then you can go to the oxalic acid. Again, it's, it's a little more caustic than uh, the, the CLR, so you want to be careful with it. Uh, same safety protocols as the other acids, but um, yeah, and again, I like to put this in a crock pot and let it boil for 12 hours at a time and checking it every couple hours to make sure if it's, you want to take it out as soon as it's done. Thanks for watching our video. Uh, keep in mind that all of our videos and events are sponsored by 
our real estate team, uh, Rock On Real Estate and Gem Quality Real Estate, along with Crystal Barista. Thanks.